We had some internet problems earlier, but if you're with us online, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. If you're here in person, would you take the pew pads at the end of your rows, fill it in, let us know that you were here, let the people that you're sitting with know who you are in the event that they don't. Just gives us an opportunity to know each other a little bit better and makes it less awkward if you think that you should know somebody's name and you don't. <laughs> Guilty. All right, so some of the things that we've got going on, I am advised that Ramblers meet this Wednesday. There's no reservation required, and if I'm right, I think that's at noon. Yes. It's at noon, so be here. Fellowship a little bit, if you can, with some of the folks from church. It's a wonderful time. Also, there's a date that we want you to save. The women have a single-day women's retreat on February 25th. There are more details here, and I'm sure there's somebody that you can get in contact with if you want to know how to participate or just to come, that will be an exciting time. And then finally, I know that something we've all been waiting for is, is happening. The session has called a meeting of the congregation Sunday, January 22nd, that's two weeks from today, 10.45 a.m. It will be here in the sanctuary for the purpose of the pastor nominating committee to present a candidate to be called the senior pastor of Bethel Presbyterian Church to approve those terms of call. And then following the approval of the candidate, the PNC will be dissolved since their work will be successfully completed. So we are all excited. I hope we can all, as many of us be here, should be a time of celebration and I'm excited for that. And with no further ado, if I may have the children up front. <clears throat> All right, welcome you guys. I hope everybody had so much fun over the holidays. I hope you celebrated Jesus' birthday in an amazing way. And I hope that you've had a happy new year and we are all excited for the year to come. I know I am. We're gonna start this year though with a little bit of a problem. You guys see what I have? It's a puzzle. It's a puzzle, but what's my problem? Uh, one, one piece missing. is missing. Oops. <laughs> There's a piece missing. So let me see here. I've got it. See, when I do puzzles at home and I put them away and I've gotten them all stacked in and put it back where it's gone, a lot of times what I find is there's a piece on the floor that I didn't get put in the box. So I just keep them right here and surely one of these pieces will fit in this puzzle. Let's try them. Let's see. Cameron, will you see if this piece will fit in this puzzle? Definitely not. It's for today. Well, it's way too big. We can just see that by looking at it. Hmm. You mean, so it matters I can't just put any piece in here? Uh-oh, there went a few of them. It, it just kind of falls off. All right, well, let's try another one. Anna Kate, which one do you have? Oh, that one's the wrong shape, huh? What about, is that the wrong shape too? Is there one in there? Just give me a minute. Is that one? Oh, that one's a pretty good shape, but not exactly the right size. Well, this one's got pretty colors. I like flowers. So, and it's got an edge piece. Can I just stick the edge piece in there? And no. because I like it, that works? No. Oh, all right. Well, so we'll, we'll give that one a try in just a minute. First of all, let me make an observation here. Do you know what? Will you collect those and put them back in there? Do you know what I see and I am thinking about puzzles that I think about you guys too? Clearly, those pieces came from different puzzles. And I look at you guys and I see that you guys have different sizes and shapes and colors of your parts that make a different picture. And each picture is unique and different than any other picture here. And not just any old piece that you take from any old puzzle will fit for you. But here's the something that's the same. Listen, here's something that's the same about all of us. We're all puzzles and we're all made up of lots of different pieces, but there's one missing piece in all of us and what's missing is the same for everybody. God told us in Ecclesiastes that he set eternity in the hearts of mankind. That means that even when we were very first built and born to this earth, we had something missing because this earth is not an eternity. It's got endings. And what's missing is the fact that we know that there's just something that's not quite right. 
So none of these pieces are going to fit right in this puzzle. But there's one piece that will. And I had that piece in the Bible. Because the one piece that we're all missing, but that the missing thing is all the same for everybody, is God. Right? God wants us to be in his forever family forever. So there's always a piece of us that knows that we're not in the right place for the right time. The right place is heaven, and the right time is for all eternity if we trust Jesus, that one missing piece in all of us that can make us a whole puzzle, that can make us exactly who God created us to be. He gives us the hope and the joy and the love and the peace that kind of helps us get through this life that we are in and makes our life beautiful. So guys, you're going to want to, sometime in your life, think that that missing piece is one of these other different puzzle pieces. You might try to fill up your life with that cute thing that you saw in the store, or you might try to fill it by being friends with the popular kids at school, or you might try to fill it with, you know, anything that somebody else tells you is cool. But if you're feeling ever like something's missing or you're not belonging, then the piece that you need to look for is right here. That missing piece is Jesus. Will you guys pray with me? Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus will you please fill our lives, will you please fill our lives and fill our hearts so that we can overflow and everyone can see you in us. May we always fill our lives with you and not all the other stuff. Amen. All right, you guys, thanks for your help with my puzzle. Good morning. You know what I'm going to say next. I'm very predictable. We have come into this house and gathered in his name to worship him, Christ the Lord. Okay, what was Friday? What was special about January the 6th? The day of Epiphany. And what does epiphany mean? Manifestation, I think. There's several ways to look at it, but that's what the word really means. Really means. So we have the Savior of the world has been manifested by the birth of Jesus. Lots of different ways to look at the day of, of epiphany. That's an amazing revelation. The Magi coming after his birth, and the Magi represents Jesus coming to the Gentiles. Lots of other ways to it. I won't dive on into it now. But the day of Epiphany, what Susan just, just did right there was talk about that missing piece. And that's what, Christ, that's what God did for us, that missing piece of Jesus coming at Christmas. That is, so there, there we are, the epiphany. She's talked about it. We're talking about it right here. And I attempted today in selecting music for today to focus on that. Let's focus on Jesus as Lord and Christ, as, as the essential part of our lives. Without him, we are lost. So let's open this morning. How majestic is your name? Choir, please stand.
morning is, oh, worship the King. So would you stand and let's sing praises to the King. of Jesus' name. Sing it to him. My name is Margie Persons. I'm a covenant partner here at Bethel. If you will please join me for our statement of faith, the Apostles' Creed should be on the screen in just a minute. There we go. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us confess our sins to Almighty God. Let us pray. Have mercy upon us, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercies. Blot out our transgressions, wash us thoroughly from our iniquities, 
and cleanse us from our sin. For we know our transgression and our sin is ever before us. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within us. Cast us not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from us. Restore to us the joy of your salvation and uphold us with a willing spirit through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. Know that in Jesus, God embraces you, forgives you, and strengthens you to live a renewed life. Thanks be to God. Now, will the ushers please come forward for the offering? You may be seated.
us pray together for a moment. Father, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you so much for the gift of Jesus Christ, without whom our lives would never, ever be complete. Thank you for the blessings you have bestowed on us. Thank you for the privilege of bringing you some of those blessings back to this place, this community of believers in this house to provide and to reach out to carry the message of Jesus and the love of Jesus to others in the world. Thank you so much. We give you these now with our whole heart. In Jesus' holy and precious name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. I think now is the time that I am to introduce somebody you've probably never seen before. There's a lot of laughter going on out there. Jeremy Churchill, welcome to the pulpit this morning. So we look forward to a message from you today. Thank you. It's been a, it's an honor and a pleasure to introduce you this day. Jeremy Churchill. You know, a lot, um, first, it's great to be back here with you this morning. Um, a lot has gone on um, since I've been here last. I am now the father of a one-year-old, as you read in the bulletin. I'm not sure how that happened. Um, I guess time doesn't stop, and it seems to go much faster as a parent. I'm sure a lot of you know what that's like, and maybe even faster as a grandparent. I don't know. Um, I finished the semester of school, started a new semester, learning all about Presbyterian creeds and confessions this semester. So that Apostles' Creed that we just uh, got done saying, uh, I'll be deep diving into that. So at the end of the semester, if there's something you want to know, hopefully I'll be able to tell you about it. Um, the first prayer request, though, as we go into this time of prayer that I'll add to the list is Anderson. He had a 102 degree fever this morning, so that's why him and Ann are not here this morning. Uh, they had planned to come to both services, but um, had to stay home. Didn't want to get anybody sick. So we think he's just teething, but uh, please keep him in your prayers. The way I would like to do this uh, prayer time today is I'm just going to throw out a category through a prayer that I lead. And then when we get to that category, if you have someone that comes to mind or a situation that you would like to be prayed for, let's just say those out loud. No need for a mic. No need to um, spend too much time on it. Call those popcorn prayers in youth ministry. So let's go to God in prayer now, and as you feel led, please speak those names out loud that need to be prayed for. Father God, there's so much for us to praise you about this morning, so much to thank you for, Lord God. The way in which you are at work in our lives as individuals, God, and in the life of this church. For that, God, we're thankful but it doesn't come without its issues, Lord God. This fallen world comes with it, burdens that we carry. And God, you want us to name those because you will intervene, you can step in and help. So God, now as we go to you in prayer, we ask that you hear these names of folks that are struggling, that are hurting, that are sick, among us, those names that are on our hearts this morning, God, hear our prayers. Don. God, these names and so many others are on our hearts this morning. God, we also want to pray for those who need to hear your word, to receive the message of the gospel, God. Those that don't have that hole in their heart filled. So God, now we lift up those names of folks who we want to share the gospel with, Lord God.
God, we also do want to come to you in thankfulness. So for the situations that you've already been at work and the ways in which you have been good to us, Lord God, we lift up a prayer of thanks this morning. Hear our prayers of thanksgiving. Church, family, and friends. A one-year-old. God, God, there's so much more that we could say. The list of ways we could be thankful can go on and on. But God, we just want you to know how much we appreciate what you've done for us and the way in which you will work in our lives this year. As you call us to new and exciting things here in 2023, Lord God, we ask that your spirit come upon us that it would guide us, that it would lead us to where you're calling. We thank you, we praise you. It's in your son's holy and precious name that we pray. Amen. As this new year approaches, I often start to think about New Year's resolutions. I mean, that even came up in the hallway earlier when I was talking with a few folks. Uh, Miss Ann was talking about one that she had set for herself. And I'm sure most of us think about resolutions. Now, notice I didn't say that we set them, right? They're at least top of mind, something that we're thinking about. Now, I wonder, like Anne, have any of you set resolutions? Anyone willing to raise a hand to say that they set some kind of New Year's resolution? Not very many hands. Maybe that's how confident we are in the fact that we might actually follow through with them. <laughs> that's true for me, at least. Um, you know, we set resolutions, or at least some folks do, as a way to try to make our lives better, as a way to call ourselves to something greater. Maybe we're calling ourselves to better health. Maybe we're calling ourselves to save more money or to spend less. Or maybe we're calling ourselves to quit whatever addiction might have a hold of our life. I found this interesting. Only 40% of Americans actually set resolutions. That was surprising to me because I honestly thought that that number would have been lower. And what's not surprising at all is that only 9% of those people actually follow through with them, right? We know this. People set them, but they don't often follow through. For those that aren't good at math, 91% of people don't follow through. And maybe, again, it's just why we're so reluctant to set them, right? We don't have any... Uh, faith in ourselves to follow through. Well, one resolution I've set for myself this year is to read the Bible in a year. It was actually a challenge that a, uh, the pastor of the church that Ann and I are attending has set forth to his congregation. And just under 100 people took him up on that challenge. So what we're doing is we're using the YouVersion Bible app. We're reading the same passages each and every day. And then we're able to comment at the end of the day to talk about what it is that we uh, have seen, something new that's jumped out to us, ways that God has spoken to us through that passage. It's been amazing so far. It has been great to see what other folks have to say about certain passages, ways that I have not been able to read a passage. Uh, God has spoken to me in different ways. So it's just been really cool. Now, what are some of those resolutions that maybe you've set for yourself? I wonder if any of them match this top 10 list that I found online. Some of the things that people resolve to do in the new year. Exercise more, lose weight, get organized, to learn a new skill or a hobby, to save more money or spend less money, to quit smoking, spend more time with family and friends, to travel more, or maybe it's to read more. I know I have about 18 books on my desk that I have to read in the next 10 weeks. So I will be resolving to read a little bit more this semester. Now, these 10 resolutions, they're what most Americans are calling themselves to in this new year. You see, 
we see this, this time of new year, this turning over of a new leaf as a great opportunity to start anew as the year 2022 comes to a close. But it's not just enough to know what we want to call ourselves to. The question is, do you know what God is calling you to this year? Have you asked God what he has in store for you or what he has in store for your family? We cannot know if we do not ask. It was a question that I wrestled with back about 10 months ago, middle of 2022, I was asking God what he had in store for me as we finished out the year and as we looked towards 2023. The answer I got back, a little surprising, a little terrifying. It seemed impossible. It was going to require a lot of faith. And it made me question, was it really God's call for my life? What I heard God tell me was that I needed to take seminary seriously. And I needed to go full time. But what that would mean is that my family would have to leave this place called Bethel that we had loved for so many years. It was scary. A little surprising. I never thought I'd become a full-time seminary student. I mean, if you know me, you know I am not a guy that really likes to do school. It's just not. So right, I wondered how it would go. I was terrified. Can you imagine? A person as outgoing as me, who loves to be in conversation, sitting in a room all day behind a closed door and doing schoolwork and not talking to anybody? How would that work? And you can thank your own Sean Niner back there, because he's the one that initially pointed that out to me. I hadn't even thought about that. And then Sean asked me how it was going to go. And I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know. Thankfully, I've gotten lunch with a lot of folks, and so it's fine. God's brought other ways to have fellowship together. Um, it seemed impossible. Our family had just moved to a new and bigger house. How could we afford to lose an income, pay for school, and still thrive? And at that point, with a six-month-old at that, I knew it was going to require a lot of faith. God was going to need to be the main guide to get me to what was coming. The only way it could work is if I leaned into God's presence with all my heart, with all my soul, and with all my mind. I question, was this God or did Jeremy come up with some grand scheme on his own? I think at times we often have thoughts like that in our minds. I didn't know what was to come, but I knew that I needed to at least take that first step. Maybe, like me, You've been called by God to do something that seems impossible, do something out of the box, so far out of your comfort zone that you have more questions than you have answers. And maybe you're struggling to move forward to where God has called. Maybe he's called you to a new house, called us to a new house last year, maybe a new job. Maybe he's called you into deeper relationship with him. Maybe he wants you to serve this church more or to get better connected here through small groups, Sunday school classes, Bible studies. Maybe he wants you to go on a mission trip this year. Maybe it's to spend less time on the road and more time at home. Or maybe it's to share the good news of the gospel with somebody that you know around you that needs that hole in their heart filled. It might seem surprising, terrifying, impossible, hard, too far out of your comfort zone, or maybe you just question whether or not God's actually leading you there or not. No matter what God's plan for us this year is, we have to fight off temptations. The temptation mainly to not follow through. And if you're like me, I think there's three specific temptations that we see or that we often say to ourselves and back to God. The first one, we think it's impossible, and especially if we're looking at it through human eyes. The second is we're not even really sure if it's God. Again, did I come up with this on my own, 
Or is it what God is really calling me to? And we have to wonder if we have enough faith in both ourselves and in God to really make it happen. I don't think these objections hold a whole lot of weight, and I think we see in Scripture that it'll tell us why they don't. You know, there's actually a young girl, a young girl in Scripture that just like you and I was called, (coughs) excuse me, by God, I'm going to need some water. A young girl that was called by God to do something extraordinary. And as we could imagine, she dealt with questions. She dealt with some concerns, some fears, before she decided to take that step forward. That young girl, if you've seen the scripture for today, was Mary. What was her calling? To give birth and carry God incarnate. His son, Jesus. And if you'll amuse me today, I know we often only look at Mary during Advent, but I think it's a a good reminder, and I think there's some striking similarities between what Mary's story plays out, how it plays out, and what so many of us often see happen, both either currently or what has happened in our own lives. So let's take a minute. Let's look at the scripture for today. We're going to read from Luke chapter 1. We're going to read verses 26 through 38 together this morning. I'll be reading from the NIV translation. That's what will be on the screen. If you have your Bible app, if you've got the physical copy of the Bible in front of you, that's the NIV as well. But let's hear these words from Luke, the doctor, starting with verse 26. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth a town in Galilee, to a virgin, pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I'm the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Could you imagine, just think about it for a minute, how scared Mary must have been when this angel comes to her and speaks these words. I'm sure she was wondering, how in the world was this going to happen? She wondered what sort of backlash she might uh, see from a virgin who's engaged to be married, who ends up pregnant, and on top of it all, Joseph is not the father. Almost sounds like a scene out of the TV show Mari Povich. Could you imagine opening the envelope? Joseph, you are not the father. (laughs) Drama aside, though, Just like Mary, or just like us, Mary found herself surprised, terrified. It seemed impossible. And she knew that going where God was calling her was going to take a lot of faith. She was surprised. She had no intentions of being pregnant. I mean, she wasn't even married yet. And then out of the blue comes a wild ride. I mean, it probably seemed impossible to her. How could a virgin, get pregnant. I mean, 
She was probably thinking, I've seen miracles in my day, but this would top them all. I mean, it couldn't really happen, could it? Um, she knew that if this God was, this call was from God, and that if he was going to arrange things just the way that he wanted, she was going to need a lot of faith to see it through. You see, at first, Mary's humanness took over, as it so often does with us. It began by asking a question of God like, how will this be? She wasn't sure how a young, immature girl could make it as the mother of God's son. She probably had thoughts like, what if I don't raise him right? What if I fail Jesus as a parent? What would happen then? She began to question herself just like we all do. See, we often don't see a way forward if we only look at God's call in human terms. But instead of thinking in human terms, we need to remember the power, the great and mighty power that comes from God. Pray to him, ask him for it, and be ready to surrender to it. We have to learn that our humanness ultimately leads, the acceptance of our humanness ultimately leads us to a dependence on God our Father. All godly callings require more than our human selves can handle. Like the author Rebecca Pippert writes in her book, Stay Salt, when we learn to celebrate our smallness and to depend on the power of God, it affects every aspect of our lives. She goes on to say that we must realize that it's okay to be inadequate and that our human weakness is no hindrance to God using us for his kingdom. You see, just like Mary came to terms with her humanness and jumped in to be the mother of Jesus, she realized how possible it was with God's help. We, too, need to understand that with the power of the Most High overshadowing us, nothing can stop us from getting to where God's called. Nothing is impossible. Think to the words of Isaiah 55. For your thoughts are not, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. My thoughts than your thoughts. God's moving us towards something so high, we can't even imagine it in our own minds. We need to have the confidence to know that God's got us, to be able to jump in and move forward. It starts by trusting God and knowing that he has hand-picked us for this particular calling in this particular season of our life. So let's take our minds away from that feeling of inadequacy and stand tall knowing that God is working through us to bring the change to our world through us that he desires. We can stand tall just like the saints who came before, who started out with feelings of inadequacy, but that got reassurance from God's mighty power working through them for the calling that he's placed upon their lives. Moses led his people out of Egypt. Noah built an ark. Daniel survived a lion's den. David, Peter, Jesus, Paul, Mary. They all went from questioning to assurance. And just like those voices in scripture, God wants us to flourish. He wants to see us succeed. Us as individuals and also us as a church body. Remember these words from Paul when he writes in Romans 8, 28? And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. I want to focus on that last part, called according to his purpose. In the Greek, that literally means a setting forth in advance for a specific purpose. 
God's got a specific purpose for each of us this year, set forth long before we were born. He doesn't want to hide it. He wants to guide us. He wants the Spirit to guide us so we can flourish. Because he knows what each of our individual worlds need, and he has placed us in the situations that he needs us to do some really mighty work. I jumped in. I went to seminary full time. Mary, Moses, Noah, Jesus, Paul, they all followed God's call for their life. What would happen if you jumped in and followed God's call for you this year? God blessed me with a successful semester, one point away from two A's. God blessed Mary, a beautiful baby boy. He brought the Savior into the world. How will God bless you if you are willing to follow where he's leading? See, we don't need more self-confidence. We need more God-confidence. Because the only way we can do anything of earthly, I mean of heavenly significance is if we follow God and have confidence in him. But don't wait for God to give you what it is that you think you need to move forward. See, you're sitting here waiting for everything to fall into place and God's saying, I just don't need to give it to you quite yet. I heard a pastor recently say that God gives provision where there's vision. The vision comes first, and the provision often comes later. Not always, but God's vision for us comes, and then the provision that he wants to give is released when he knows that we need it. And we can have the confidence to know that if God is doing the calling, he and the spirit living inside of us will help get us through His vision for us, his dream, his call for us is to flourish for the kingdom. Just as the angel told Mary, hear these words today because they apply to us as well. The Holy Spirit's going to come on us and the power of the Most High is going to overshadow us. I mean, what more do you need to hear? God's called you, he wants you to flourish, and the power of God is going to overshadow you. My challenge to you this year both individually and as a church, when God calls, be ready to move because some pretty amazing things are probably going to happen. That road may not always be easy. There may be some bumps, but the end goal, that calling of God is always worth the struggle that it takes to get there. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, There is so much that this church is called to do. God, you're calling us individually this year, and we want to follow. But we need you to tell us where you want us to go. So God, bring to mind the ways in which you want to work in our lives this year. Speak to us. Guide us. Give us what we need when we need it. There's so much we want to do, so many ways we want to impact the kingdom, Lord God, and we want that to align with where you're calling each of us. So be with us, Lord God. Step by step, guide us so that we can follow your will in your way. We love you, we thank you. It's in your son's holy and precious name that we pray, amen. Friends, this is a joyous feast of the people of God. They shall come from east and west and north and south to sit at the table in the kingdom of God. This is the table of the Lord Jesus Christ, and it's Jesus who invites all who believe in him to come and partake of the meal that he has prepared, realizing that this is a table not just for the worthy, but it is a privilege for those who are undeserving who come in faith, repentance, and love. Paul's words remind us that as we come to the table, we are to examine ourselves, that we are to consider 
Christ's sacrifice for us. Otherwise, he who eats of the bread and drinks of the cup without realizing the body of Christ brings judgment upon itself. This table is not for those who believe themselves to be righteous because of their own works. It is for those who know their need for the Savior, Jesus. Those who have by their baptism committed to a life following Jesus and who believe with their hearts, trust with their minds, and are striving to faithfully work out their salvation with fear and trembling are all welcome here. Please join me now in the responsive reading on the screen. We lift our voices and prayers to the Lord for his grace and love in the gift of new life in his Son. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, it is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise. Eternal God, creator and ruler of the universe. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. In Jesus, born of Mary, your word became flesh and dwelt among us full of grace and truth and proclaimed the good news of your kingdom to the poor and needy. He came with healing in his touch and was wounded for our sins. He came as one with mercy in his voice and was mocked and despised. He came with peace in his heart and was met with violence and death. Dying on the cross, he gave himself for the life of the world. By your power, he broke free from the prison of the tomb, won for us victory over death, and at his command, the gates of hell were opened. Seated at your right hand, he leads us to eternal life and is with us always as he has promised. We praise you that Christ now reigns in glory and will come again to make all things new. Father, pour out on your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these elements of bread and wine, symbolizing the body and blood of the risen Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, and so one with all who share in the feast. In this oneness, grow us up to be the full stature of the measure of Christ so that we are prepared to bear your name to a world enslaved by sin. Amen. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. On the night when our Lord was arrested, he took the bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and said, this is my body for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And each time you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. The table is prepared. We invite the elders to come forward. Is he who comes down from heaven 
and gives life to the world. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall not thirst. Please hold the bread and we'll partake together. body of Christ broken for you. Please hold the wine and we'll partake together.
for you. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. We have recalled your mighty acts in holy history. We have seen your power in sending light to conquer darkness, water to give us life, and the bread of heaven to nourish us in love. Send us with your salvation and joy to all the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And when the supper ended, they sang a song and departed. Please stand and sing the last verse of All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. God's calling, will you answer? He wants to take you somewhere that you can't even imagine this year. My prayer for you this morning is that you will answer that call. That you will ask God where it is that he wants you to go, and you will go. You will be blessed mightily, and I think your life will be much grander. God does so much more in our lives than we could ever imagine. So now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May you make his face to shine upon you be gracious unto you. May he turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. Have a great week.